All right. Go, buddy. Go, buddy. Go. Yo, what's going on? Welcome back, everyone. Week five football underway. Uh, we got the NFL show here. No Brett this week, unfortunately. But we got Michael and Andrew back. How you guys feeling? High energy, high picks, Good. high results. Feeling All good, time. baby. Jets fucking blow. Fuck my card last week. They fucking suck. Adam Gase deserves to be fucking fired and throwing a fucking little pit with a bunch of fucking wolves, dude. Fuck that, dude. And then also, fuck, uh, the Cardinals are frauds, okay? They're fucking frauds. Kyler Murray, the little short fucking midget. He's, like, as tall as me. But, like, that short fucking midget, fraud. Um, or the uh, Chargers. They're fraudulent, too. No, because no, no one thought they were good, though. The Chargers have played some good teams so far, too. No, but I don't think the Chargers are good, but no one thought, no one thought that they were good. Like, the, the Cardinals, after two weeks, everyone's like, this team could win the division. Like, no one was saying that about the Chargers. Who did the, Char- who'd the Cardinals play week two? Uh, they beat um, – They beat really the bad. Niners week one, and then they mm-hmm. beat um, – yeah, I don't think it was someone good, but a bunch of people were really high on them. Because they were, they were doing the, a, oh the Washington the, football team. Bears played the Giants too. The Washington oh, football yeah. team, but I mean they're frauds. Okay, like people actually thought they were going to be good. Um, Tyler actually, Murray cannot win that division. No chance. That's what everyone got more film on him. They were a little rusty to start. Texans fired Bill O'Brien. Smartest move they could have made. I mean, the dude fucked him for the next 15 years. They don't have a first-round draft pick for, like, three years, and they're so bad. But does that – does that pre- – like, so the GM answers to the president, correct? Yeah. Of the team? Yeah. So does the president just have, like, zero football knowledge or is, like, no, 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 Bill O'Brien, like, the greatest salesman of all time, somehow convincing him that – I think he can use the Belichick. I think he was just like, look, I've won you to vi-. – because, like, the, he had a GM when he first went. So, like, they fired a GM, and then, like, they're like, why don't you take over? Okay, why don't you go full-time? But, like, I think it was, like, one of those, like, like the Texans weren't really good necessarily before he got there. So, he, like, won a division or two. So, and he, I think he had, like, a lot of um, persuasion and drafting to Sean Watson. So, like, oh, maybe this guy does know what he's talking about. And then they just ran with it. But then he tried doing, like, a whole Belichick thing. Yeah, well, I, I guess what we're, we're, we're talking hindsight here that – because, I mean – I, DeAndre Hopkins is a, is a top guy, like, no doubt about it, but I don't think he's, like, necessarily who you build your franchise around, if that makes sense. Like, but he's not. Why wouldn't you build it around Deshaun Watson? Yeah, that's what – but that, so keeping him obviously makes the sense. Like, I'm not saying get rid of him, but what I'm, but say, they I'm also, saying like, – They've also traded their offense. Up, you don't give up the barn to get him is what I'm trying to say for Hopkins, in my opinion. But they get they didn't even get back Pitts. They got back David Johnson and like two players. I know that that's why that's what I'm saying. Like how did that how did he convince the president that that was a good play? That was my original point. And then, then also I went to like kind of defend it to defend him by saying I don't, I'm not like I just had DeAndre Hopkins on my fantasy team a couple of years and those were like his two off years out of the past like seven. So I had yeah, like a no I team. I get that but he also is traded it's like two or three offense linemen like it's like he traded their left tackle. And got like, or no, he he gave up like two first round draft picks for a left tackle who's been like awful. I mean, absolutely awful. So it's like, who was it, Tunsil? Yeah, the guy can smoke some dope. He can smoke <laughs> dope. I mean, if this was a smoking dope league, which Hitler could tell. He, he saw that video up. with the gas mask. He's like, holy shit! Yeah, get his, him over here. His hey, lungs, two, three, four round picks. Come on, his lungs. But I, I think, it, dude, it's just like, but there's sh- like, they had to shine for four or five years. At like 160, like they're so fucked right now. Like, what are you gonna do? They they will, in and it did not help that their schedule was fucking. It dead was row brutal. It first. was brutal. And like, cool. and you can also probably argue like the Vikings are like not a typical 0 and three team. You know what I mean? Like they've had chances to win football games. Other than oh yeah, the no, the Vikings are still a middle of the pack team at yeah at worst. exactly. Like once so the season said and done. So it's like you know they'll, be, they'll then, be better than the Bears once the season said and done. Um, I think. And then, and then, and then to my point of who's a better three and O team, the Steelers or the Bears? I think it showed Sunday. Uh, Steelers didn't lose, and the Bears did. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about the Bears real quick. Did you actually think that the big private parts guy himself was going to be the same? Like, did you think he was going to 
do well the rest of the season. Be honest. Yeah. How? Why the fuck wouldn't anybody think he was going to play well again? Because he, he he literally he threw for three touchdowns in less than a half of football. I granted it was the Falcons, but like the offense, the offense just couldn't get anything going. Like the Colts defense. I said I said it last week. This was going to be a matchup of two of the top five defenses in the league, and the the Colts defense just shut down almost everything everything we had. I, the Colts offense is not that good. Like I mean, Phil Rivers is not that good. I also said whichever defense had more turnovers was going to win the game. Yeah, and I I mean, the that, were- that's like telling me water's wet, though. I mean, that's like 99%. Because I knew it was going to be a low scoring game. Like a team with uh, more turnovers can still win a high scoring okay. game. Okay. So, so here, here's a question then. Okay. Who would you start, Mitch or Nick? Against the Bucks. Nick Against Foles. Dick Brady. Okay. So Nick Foles goes out. They score 10 points this week. They lose to the Bucks. Would you consider. But you going said back? Foles this week? He said Nick Foles, yeah. Would you consider yeah. going back to Mitch after this week if that – what I just said – I mean, it's not – not. it's a I mean, hypothetical. Would I you mean, go back to Mitch then? I just haven't even thought of that scenario just because I have a lot of confidence in Nick. But See, I this just, is my problem about Nick Foles, though. I, mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to switch back, like – Yeah. Because then what – like the, off, the whole, like, offensive line and the receivers are going to be like, yo, what the fuck are we doing here? I agree with that. I agree with that. But that's true. But what were they? they there's what, two. The list. Sean Trubisky was short. The two pro. The two problems with all this though. People forget that like Nick Foles, other than a Super Bowl year, yeah, he won a Super Bowl. Like give him credit, he was amazing. But he's like been below average quarterback in every other year he's played football. He has not been a good quarterback. Yeah, he was hurt in Jacksonville, but he was not good like the three or four games before he got hurt. Like they were considering Bro. like starting Gardner Minshew before he got hurt. And they actually right. split times. But then also my other thing is is uh, <laughs> the head coach of the Bears, he's been firing everyone, hiring new people, firing everyone, doing all this, doing all that, starting different quarterbacks. What's the constant in everything? Him. Yeah, him. He's the only constant in all this, of this it. This is not on him. He, no, like, I mean, here, here's what you can sum up that Nick Foles I is disagree. Not a good quarterback. If, if, here's you, how you, can if say you consider it. yourself an offensive guru and this is Dude, what you put our, out that line is so no. it's literally so like I've said it's been like this for years. Like we have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. And that, that Bears performance last week reminded me of the Steelers last year, and they literally didn't have a competent quarterback. Like, that's how bad they look. Yeah, they, like I said, they couldn't get anything going on offense. But I think the one uh, big, like, critical thing I would say for Nagy is that when they made the switch to Nick Foles, I definitely thought they were going to have a much better, like, game plan to use the tight ends. Cause or, like, Foles- open up the offense. Right, Nick Foles fucking ate with a two tight end system, and now we got Cole Komet and Jimmy Graham. Like, yeah. we should be able to run both of them up the middle, and one of them should be open almost every single time for a quick five. I agree six. with that. Like, that should just be there. I do agree but, with but, that. Okay, so to to say that Mitch Foles, I mean, it's you can sum it up so easily by saying Nick. When you're saying Nick Foles is not a good, very good quarterback, he's Ooh. a backup to Mitch Trubisky. That was – we talked about that last week. Like, that was the game plan because falling back no, from – But but here's the hole in the argument. He's not – if he's that good, then you don't have to play these stupid games to try Mitch again. Like, unless, yeah, you're, unless but, you're giving him but, one last shot, unless you're giving him one last shot to be literally like a franchise, franchise quarterback. I, I think you give him one last shot. You don't waste a two-second second overall pick. Like, you have so much invested in this guy, whether he sucks or is, like, good. Like you have to give him another shot. I, don't, I I I agree that you Mitch should have started this year because, like, you don't trade up to get this guy. You don't. Why, why give him? Why give him that short of a leash though? He didn't. He wasn't even playing that bad. He didn't have a short leash, bro. Like he started three two games. Three. Yeah, it was three games and two. They seasons. won all three games. He started. Yeah, Nick Foles two, won the game three. Okay, well he won the other two and he had like a bad half game there or like a full game, I guess. It was a bad. Yeah, it was a horrible game, though. But, like, but you can't. But the, but the thing is, is you can't take Mitch out in that game, and Nick Foles brings him back after how bad Mitch has looked. 
And against the Giants, Mitch looked horrible. They won that game like 17-9, to nine, and that was all the defense. So it wasn't like, like, it wasn't like Mitch played well. He only played well in the fourth quarter of the Detroit Lions game. That's the only time he's played well this year. So you can't really – like, and then you bring in Nick and he wins the game. You can't really turn back and be like, okay, we just saw that. Like, I don't – like, I just thought, for me, Water was fi- going to find its level because I don't think Nick Foles is, like, a great quarterback. He had his one year. But, like, you can't go back to Mitch, I don't think, the next year. I just don't – I don't – or the next game. Wait, next year? The next game, I'm saying. Like, when oh, they played the Colts. Oh, no, not the next game. No way. So, so that's what I'm saying, though. His, his short lease, leash wasn't that short. Like, he looked awful in three quarters against the Lions. He looked terrible in four quarters against the Giants. Then he looked bad – against probably the worst defense in football on the Falcons for two and a half quarters. And then they bring in Foles and he throws three touchdowns. So it's like, I mean, you can't – like Mitch, it's it's a short lease, but it's not because it's like we're giving you one opportunity. You go out and you play – I think even if he looked good against the Giants, like if he would have went out and looked really good against the Giants, I think they would have left it in longer against the Falcons. But he didn't look good against the Giants. He looked horrible. So – so, okay, so Nick Foles, we can agree, looked really bad against the Colts, though, right? Horrible. Yeah, the whole offense, though. It wasn't just Nick Foles. Yeah. No, 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 no. But, but, you, can, but you can't use that argument. You can't be like, oh, Mitch Yeah, the whole horrible. offense looked shitty. Right. The whole offense yeah. looked time in the first four games. Or yeah. three games. I'm not saying it was the rest of the offense's fault Nick Foles played bad. I'm saying Nick Foles played bad and, like, also the rest of the offense. So, but that was true in the first three quarters of the Lions game and then against the Giants. Yeah. I would say, yeah. In the first three quarters against the Falcons. So, it, it, it stays true to the rest of the game, or the rest of the time we're talking here for Mitch. But I, my thing is, okay, so, yeah, how it, does Nick Foles get the rest of the season, though? Is there anything you can do to not start? I, it, you would have to get hurt. I, I agree with that's, Nagy. That's what I would say, too. At this I agree point. with Nagy, though. Like, you can't just keep going back and forth. Like, and now you're – like, the problem is, okay. is, is like, you're – like, Mitch's confidence is probably shot. M- Mitch is done. Yeah. Mitch is over. Like, yeah. it, he'll, he's never seen a snap unless it's garbage time or – Yeah, it would, it, like, the Bears would have to be up or down, like, first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Nick Foles would have to look horrible and they're down, like, 24 points in the third quarter. And like, all right, give us a spark. Like, that's the no, – but I, th- I, don't even, I don't even think then – that would just that would play mind games with the. No, that would, I would that would more he, he, good, I he did it. He did it last year against the Rams. He threw in Chase would, Daniel for no reason. I would say Mitch has a better chance coming in when we're up a ton than when we're. Yeah. If, but, but if you do that with a team that's actually like has a positive record, like you know has a chance to like really get into the playoffs, that would fuck with. Do you know how many questions you're gonna get if you put Mitch back in there down 24? Yeah, yeah it's a huge saying, locker room distraction. Yeah, no, he's, he was responding to me, but. I, oh, yeah, but it's also like, look at their – I mean, they got destroyed by the Colts. No, they got destroyed by the Colts, and then, like, their combined record of the other three teams is – I know. Crazy. They are they are the worst 3-0 team in NFL history. I can stand by that. I agree. Because, like, the, the Steelers played no one, too, but they never were like, oh, they're going to lose this game. Not one time. And that was – that was every single week they could have – like, it was, there was a second, like, the Bears are going to lose this game. And the Steelers have the, the – their opposing record – or teams that they face have the same record in the first three games. Literally only one fucking win. The Texans out. will end up being a good team, though. I don't know about a good team, but – like, uh, like, at least six to ten win, or uh, not ten. Fuck. The Texans, I, was say I mean, seven like, wins. Seven like wins. the Vikings coming off of 0-3 is not a team you want to play. And then playing the Steelers down the road, the Ravens and the Chiefs, like, that's just an awful – I can't wait till the Bears play the Vikings. I can't either. And Dick Foles. It's gonna be a. Horrible. What do you? It's not gonna be a. It's gonna be a great game. And we're gonna, we're gonna be the by two scores both times. Oh time. God! Oh, Bro, my bet whatever the God. hell you. Want right now. No, you, you were, dude. When they look out, come out and look like <laughs> shit Thursday night. Well, they will not beat a single dead. team by two scores all year. They haven't yet. Yeah, they could. They will the not. Giants I'm telling you right now, they will not. I'd take yeah, that yeah. bet right now. That's a fucking grinded out team with a great defense. They're always Ooh. gonna be close games. So they're not going to win by two scores. Except for the Vikings, because we fucking own the Vikings. No chance. Nagy is a horrible head coach. He's dead. All right, bro. Literally, That's his nephew, literally bro. Literally won, literally won <laughs> coach of the year his first year as a fucking NFL coach and took him to the fucking playoffs, 12-4, and four and won the North. Like, he's not what, that What has he done yet since? With Mitch. And, and he did it with Mitch. First, like, first year as, like, a full-season starter. So if, he, so if he's an offensive guru, how has Mitch gotten so much worse? 
That's on Mitch, bro. That's way more on Mitch. And that's why they brought Nick Foles on because Matt Nagy realized, like, yo, Mitch cannot pick up what I'm putting down. Like, he cannot handle, like, my style that I want to run with this offense. But I've worked with Nick Foles before. He's going to come in and pick up. But, that, but that's the whole reason if you – like, you can't draft him if that's the outcome, you know? You don't know shit about him before you draft him. What? Yeah, you do. You have him work out and you no, watch. I mean, like, the like the connection, like him picking up, like, the playbook, like, and stuff like that. Like, you don't know how that works. I mean, you run but him through a little bit of your playbook. We're getting – okay. We're getting we, – We did we're kind of on, hand about the Bears. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> about the Bears-Bucks game anyways. It's going to be the first game we talk about. Um, let's do a quick recap of where everyone's at on the season, how everyone did week four. Um, <laughs> that was like a – 15 minute tangent about the Bears. <laughs> Alina hit a 10 burger on Seattle. So week four, he went um, eight and a half, 8.8 plus units. A 10 burger, you hear that? Energy. Um, three and one uh, overall in week four. One and one is do or die, obviously. So now Alina is back in the black, uh, plus 1.2 units on a season, 12 and eight record. Two and three on his do or dies. Um, You're right. calling this guy? Huh? What? <laughs> Come on. Just what? running through the unit. No, I'm saying like, never mind. <laughs> he thinks I'm all sad because you guys are making fun of me. <laughs> oh, like, I didn't. No, I didn't not even, that. Just like, I, come on. I didn't even hear. I didn't even hear. Like, announce it with some, with some. With some mm. No, because I had a terrible week. That I'm more upset just looking at how I did and not. <laughs> um, say, yeah. so I'll save that for the end. Uh, Brett um, barely went positive. Um, the Cardinals really fucked him. His only do or die was the Cardinals minus three and a half. Um, still, still netted plus point seven units, four and two record overall. And now in the season, he sits plus seven point one, sixteen and ten overall, and three and two on all do or dies. Michael had a great week. Uh, one, one, or came in second behind Alina because he had the timber. Um, but Michael went plus 5.21 units in week four, going four and four and one and oh on his do or die. Um, what was your do or die? It was Bengals minus three, right? Yeah, Joey B yeah. and the boys. Yeah, but then Michael. The final of that game? Uh, they won, they won by, by like 14. Nine or 10. Yeah, or oh, maybe it was 10. Um, Wait, who'd they play again? The, the Jags. Jags. Oh, yeah. shit. So now Michael on the season is plus 12.32 units in first place for overall in the season. Uh, overall record 14 and 12 and 3 and 2 are do or dies. And I had a terrible week. Um, I was hoping the Falcons were going to do something to, to alleviate my terrible week. Um, my week four ended up minus 5.4 units, 2 and 4 overall, 1 and 1 on do or dies. I also had the Cardinals for four units, and that blew. Uh, so overall in the season, I'm now minus 6.1 units, 13 and 13 overall record, three and three on do or dies. And, with? Uh, with a losing streak, right? No, because my second do or die, or both my do or dies were at the same time of the day. Yeah, he went one and one, so. But Brett, Brett has a one do or die losing streak, so we'll put that in the tweet when that comes up uh, later tonight on our Twitter or whenever you're watching it, it'll be available. Um, any other comments on week four from you guys? I mean, it seemed like a pretty straight up week, except for our comments about fuck the Jets and fuck. Wait, who was your other do or die again, Nagy? Uh, Seattle. Uh, and then the and the Falcons was your other one? No, the, I just had the. I double dipped on the Falcons uh, over. They were, and, he had the Seahawks and the Cardinals as his two. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the Seahawks, thank God. Or I'd have been doing fucking TikToks inside the room. Dude, uh, it, I was going to say, Fitzpatrick had the ball like down nine to, yeah. to go score. Yeah. That was a good oh, game, God. Michael. Even though it was the Dolphins, the Dolphins made that a watchable game for it being the Dolphins. I think you're almost always going to get that right now with Fitzpatrick. Like, He's just going to keep them kind of in the game. And I think their coach is a good enough coach that, like, it's going to be – they're not going to ever get just, like, blown out, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, And their offense is kind of hurt right now, and they're still, like, mm -hmm. staying in it. They could win that division. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Bills division. No, it was the Bills. Like if the Bills weren't doing just, well, the maybe. Bills and the Pats. Um, Pats are two quick, and two though. Uh, just want to give a shout out to our sponsor real quick before we get into our highlighted games for Week Five. Um, SaveOurLivers.com. Give them a check out. We talked about them every week. Um, great source to get over and cure your hangovers, anything severe, anything mild. Um, they also have a victory lap kit. Uh, if you go on, you'll see anything that could help you relieve stuff like that from uh, electrolytes to powders to pills, anything you might need. Also it comes with some cool uh, merch and stickers and stuff like that. So give it, check it out. Check it out. Uh, victory lap kit purchases also help our podcast help us get more of a budget for content creation. So give it a check out. Um, and let's get into, let's get into these highlight games for week five of the NFL season. Um, we've already talked about it plenty into this podcast, but Thursday night football, we got the bears bouncing back at soldier field, having Tom Brady and the Buccaneers coming in. And right now this line has been jumping around a ton. Um, Michael was – we were talking about earlier, Michael said it, it was as high as Buccaneers minus six and a half on yeah. some sites. But right now what I currently have is the Bears are sitting at plus three and a half and the over-under is 44. Wait, where did you have the line at, Michael, as high? It was it as high as six and a half when it started this week on Tuesday. Yes, what, on Bleacher Report? No, FanDuel is what I saw it on. But – uh. And Bleacher Report, you could even go to it, and it it says where it started, and it has it at six in it. Okay. Bleacher Report's completely fucking wrong. It says three and a half, too, but I, I, saw, it at <laughs> si- I saw it at six and a half. But you might Bucks have been are, dreaming, brother. Yeah, maybe. Bucks are three and a half. Uh, I like the Bucks. I think that come behind win last week. I think the Bears are fucking dead. I mean, we went into that whole discussion, and uh, – I, I think let's I talk think, about the Bears quarterback situation. A little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say like I think we kind of like like Nagy clearly likes the Bears. Me and Alina, I would say off of our discussion, we like the Buck. You know what I mean? Like I think I'm we already also just, biased. Like I you, think are, guys, you I know, are, but some people that might not. This might be the first show they've ever watched. Like heard from someone like hey, you go, you are a huge Bears fan I for anyone who doesn't Bears, know. So it's definitely a bias. So just wanted to get that. Clear. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get too much into it. I like the Bucks. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll I'll just reiterate. I mean, Chris they, Godwin is out officially out for this game. By the way, yep. who is Chris Godwin? Chris Godwin. Godfrey or Godwin? Yeah, that? shit. That's probably why the line fucking moved. I don't think one player can account for three points. I think a bunch of people he, were jumping. He also didn't even play last. Like, he hasn't played really at all this year. Yeah, they were talking about him possibly coming back for this week. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Last week either. Okay, never mind. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, damn. I, uh, I don't – I mean, I would – I'll probably never, ever bet on the Bears with the quarterback issues they have. Um, so, I just yeah. have to take the box. It's simple as that. If, if the Bears win by, like, two touchdowns, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if they like – Oh, if they do, then you'll prove me wrong. I don't think the Bears have a chance to win by two scores the entire season. But would you reconsider, like, actually betting on them if they show up? No, oh, absolutely not. I, I would – there's two teams I will never bet on. It's the Raiders and the Bears. Fair. At least it's your own team, too. Yeah. I mean, All right. Yeah. Well, for me, um, taking a step back, uh, just for, like, podcast purposes, like – I don't want to give you guys a pick just because it's my team. I do really like the over, over 44. Um, I think there's going to be a great bounce back for Nick Foles. I don't think the the Buccaneers defense is playing a little better um, than people were expecting, but, like, it's nowhere near as, um, as, as good as the Colts defense, especially on, like, the run defense part. Um, I think the rush defense is – or the, the running game for the Bears is going to open up um, their pass game a lot more than they were able to against the Colts, obviously. Um, so I think the Bears will score like 20 or 24 points and the Bucks will be kind of right around that, that same area. So I think the, I, it's not on my card, but I think, I think this game scores like 47 or 30 points, some, somewhere in that area. I think it's going to hit the over by about four to seven points. 
So next game we got to talk about. Um, I don't have the over under available. Some of the game, some of the NFL games don't have over unders available yet because they're they're trying to figure out COVID shit. Um, but the Raiders are going into Kansas City, and the Chiefs are thirteen point favorites. Yeah. Speak. So wait. Speaking on the the COVID shit. So Gilmore was literally like right up next to Mahomes. I saw like that. You guys saw that clip. So is it still like with with how much the COVID shit changes? Like is it still it, let's say like, yeah. So those two come in contact with each other. What what's his name? Test positive. No, I think the NF how the NFL is doing it is you legit have to be negative on a te- you know what I mean. Get the te- test negative. They're not like contract. Yeah, but you, but what I was gonna say though, like you, you used to not show up positive for like two weeks. You get tested every not two weeks. That's not true, but it, yeah, it is. at one point that was the thing. Like it, you could have symptoms and not test positive for a while. Like no, it's no, not it's now. It's like two days max. So like that's why the Titans players were testing positive. Like the first seven tested positive on Tuesday, then the next three didn't test positive till Thursday. So, but they're like you have to have a positive test to sit out. The NFL, I don't think, is following contract tracing rules. Contact tracing rules. I don't think they're following those. I don't know, like because like I mean, in that case, like the Patriots, they said there was like six players in close contact with Cam. None of them sat out, but they all had to test negative yeah, no i wasn't talking about contact i was just talking like they may like the chiefs players could come up testing positive like three days later oh like, yeah yeah right. yeah but you get but now like they get tested every day so it's like he hasn't tested positive right. yet but like he still has to test pot or negative tomorrow friday saturday and i'm pretty sure yeah, they're yeah. Right. Negative before they're, the they're, yeah they're continuing to get tested but yeah well after the titans debacle i think the goodell was like all right fuck it we're just doing everyday testing like, I don't think he, there was – he's just like – I think they wanted to kind of stop it after a while, but now he's just like, I don't think we have a choice. So Yeah, because, I mean, if Cam Newton – if your quarterback has it, then well, the problem someone is, else on the team has to fucking have it. Like, that's – Right, but Cam didn't even – like, he didn't know about it until – Well, I guess Cam is kind of standoffish, I've heard, so. I, I That's what someone said there. Like, I'm not actually not shocked no one else got it. He doesn't really talk to a lot of people, so – I mean, that's, a, that's not shocking, shocking. But, like, it's like, uh, you, you know, if you, but it's crazy because, like, if you're not testing every day, what is, let's say he took a test Thursday, he didn't feel any symptoms the whole time. So, it's like he took a test Thursday, he was negative. He doesn't test again until next week. I mean, by that time, you could play a full game and you could fucking, you know what I mean? Like, there could be, like, 25 people then test positive. So, it's like. That's why I was a little, I was a little surprised. Well, I guess, so how long does he have to sit out, Cam? Like, how many days? They're saying he can, he can play next week if he's if he has if he tests negative. Yeah, they're saying that he has to. It might be twice, but yeah, he has to test negative, and then he could like slowly work his way back into practice. And then he has to obviously test negative right. again. But like you, I think for in order for you to come back, I don't think they're following like the CDC guideline. I think they're literally just following like positive negative tests. But also, like I'm pretty sure you have to be negative or positive on like two tests because they've had a few players test positive and then test again, test negative, then test again and test negative. So they're like, you have to, you yeah, know, if it's out, if it's out of three, you have to be two thirds of the one that you're testing. You know, two thirds positive, obviously. But it's like, so if, when this comes down to the playoffs and like, let's say for, for some crazy reason, it's I think Dak they're doing a bubble. Aaron Rodgers. Dude, if those two test positive, like, either they're moving the game back or they're just going to pretend that they didn't do it. I think they're doing a bubble. Oh, they are? And then the Super Bowl is a Super Bowl. But I'm pretty sure they're trying to do, like, a a bubble-type thing. Okay. Because because of that exact reason. Because I (laughs) – I don't think like, they want to leave no it. No way, Cam Newton's not playing against the Chiefs when it matters. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they want to leave it up to that because yeah. they're like, "What? We can't have the Patriots in the divisional championship playing the Chiefs and Cam Newton, Julian Edelman, and Stephon Gilmore aren't playing." You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I think they're like, "We got to do a bubble just because of that." So, um, but y- y- yeah, I mean, it's like. It's just like every sport that's played, though. Like, it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, they, they right. knew it going into it. It's how you deal with it after it already happens. And I think the mm-hmm. NFL is actually – like, the MLDB, I gave them credit. I think the MLB handled it all well. They didn't panic nothing. They didn't cancel a season, you know. They just moved games around, moved it around. And, like, 
they had two teams that they were like literally on the like people were like they should cancel the team. They've had thirteen players, you know, but they just did. See, but football's a little harder. The most wiggle room though. So no, I, football's I really, harder. I agree. But the NFL, it's not like you can always move dates. You know, like you can. You can. The NFL definitely can, and college can to an extent. But an extent, not but sure. not as much as the NFL. But yeah, like yeah. so. So I don't know. It's 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 pretty crazy. It would be it will be interesting though, like to see like does any with, Chiefs player test positive? Does any yeah? And, and with the uh, the MLB doing it too, like I remember seeing a tweet. Maybe it was like who the fuck knows if it was real, but like the, the commissioner was like, "If we don't get this under wraps soon, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. rampant. They're like, we're shutting this shit down." So that was when that was when like uh, the Cardinals went rogue. And, Cardinals had like fifteen, and the Marlins yeah, had like twenty. Yeah, someone went to dinner with like. The Cardinals went to the casino. Cardinals went to the yeah. casino and the Ozarks. The Marlins went to, like, clubs. The so, Ozarks. Like, that's a fucking time. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't blame them necessarily, but, like. Let's go get a little full set with the boys. All right. Wow. That was a rabbit hole. But. <laughs> I mean, this is an easy. Like, maybe you take the Raiders with the points, but I'm not. I would never do it. I, I, I like, I thought more highly of the Raiders. I, I think they're going to be good. I think Gruden – I don't know. I don't know, actually. But Wait, is this really in Kansas don't. City? This is in Kansas City, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing is, is, like, what, let's say Mahomes does po- test positive. And then, like, then, no, then, then, like, no, now, then like right? no one else does. Like, that would be wild. But I'm with you. I, I, it's a lot of points, but it's, like, could you ever feel good about not taking Pat Mahomes minus 13 at home against the Raiders? No, I would – the whole game I would be like, okay, they're going to score here and win by four. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I – Wait, do they uh, do they honor – if you lock it in right now, Raiders plus 13, like just like yeah, hoping you, that you, Camel yeah. or uh, Mahomes will test positive, you get to keep that bet? Yeah. Same thing. That's what happened with like betters that had like the Chiefs were minus like seven or seven and a half against the yeah. Patriots. Um, before Cam News came out, and they got yeah. to, uh, like the game has to be canceled. I think like yeah. that's the only way. Right. Like it, it, wait, so you're saying they got to keep it? They got yeah. to keep the minus seven. Oh, okay. right? I didn't. Yeah. I thought you said the other. Um, cool. Maybe you do that. Just hope because I mean Gilmore and him were like this far away. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. Um, maybe you just throw some money on that. I mean, he was that close to Tyree kill everyone. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I would say I'm a little worried um, just because it's, like, a big rivalry. Like, these, these two teams, like, play each other really hard. Um, but I was, I was definitely expecting more out of the Raiders' offense uh, this past week um, against the Bills. I don't think the Bills' defense has been, like, overwhelming, overwhelmingly good this whole year. Um, but the Chiefs, the Chiefs' defense just keeps surprisingly – surprisingly play well. Like, they're – they get in the backfield so fast, and it's really impressive. Um, I think I think the Chiefs are going to win this by seventeen or twenty points um, if the if the defense plays really well. But um, it's not on my card because I'm I don't like I don't like betting uh, like really good robberies like this when it's over two possessions like this. Backdoor cover definitely in play with a thirteen point line. Yeah, it could it could definitely happen. I mean, the last two times they've played, it's been like if I remember right, eight like an eighteen point game. Like it was kind of close in the first one, and the second one was like forty to fucking like nine or some shit. So yeah, it's it's like such a toss up. Like which Raiders are going to show up? I I do not trust them. I mean, just look at like the, what the Chargers were able to, to do against the Chiefs in week two. Right, and the Chargers did that last year too. They they somehow pulled some shit out of their yeah, ass. That was the game in uh, Mexico. Yeah, in Mexico. Uh, the Chiefs in Mexico. Yeah, I, I think it's that, that division doesn't get enough credit for how strong the rivalries are. I feel like kind of get a little overshadowed by some of the other divisional rivalries, except especially the fucking NFC East, bro. Like, can we stop talking about – we can't talk about those rivalries anymore until two teams in that division go over 500 in a single season. I don't want to yeah. hear anyone like around. Yeah, you're, that's a good well, point. Well, those are like staple rivalries. And well, also – also, like I don't like I There's honestly think they, franchise. No, like, but I'm saying, but I think those rivalry, the the Cowboys Eagles, I think I consider the rivalry the fans, not even like the two teams. You know what I mean? Oh, I yeah. So it's like so it's like without fans, that's not a rivalry game anymore. Giants like, Eagles, like, Giants. I mean, they're all like Dak. Dak isn't fucking like they're not pissed off because they're playing the Eagles. You know what I mean? Like they're only pissed off because they if they walk in with a bunch of fans because of the fan. Phillies fans hate. 
the gallows. There, yeah, there, there needs to be some more like storylines. Like, oh, when back was when back when Odell was there, he's like, oh, Dak Prescott's fiance dumps on Odell's chest or whatever. Like the story would be. Yeah. Like, get, the, yeah. get the blogs flowing. Get them just going. Spit, just spitballing yeah. a story here. All right, so we're we're going to skip over. We're going to talk about the Bills and the Titans this week, but it's not listed for obvious reasons. They're still trying to figure out COVID shit in Tennessee. Yep. Um, so the next game, next game we talk about is going to be uh, the Colts and the Browns. Both teams are three and one, uh, playing decent football on both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, did anybody think that the Browns were going to be over five hundred at almost any point this season? No. Maybe week one. They played the Ravens. They played the, uh, they played I, mean, the Ravens. I mean, after week four, like, did you? Oh really? wait, no, they played the Ravens week one, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. We... No, I, I guess. No, I I, not really. Um, but you know, after week one, if you would have told me both these teams were going to be three and one, like the Colts lost to the Jacks and looked horrible bad. in week one. Um. This is, but both, but like you said, both teams are playing good football. I don't think the Colts' offense is that good, but they do probably have maybe a top three defense in football for sure, top five. Um, I don't think they've really played necessarily great offenses, but like to produce the amount of turnovers they produce, you got to be pretty good. The Browns' defense, Dick Rivers. I don't think is that great. Yeah, Dick Rivers won't lose you games, but uh, I don't. The, the Browns might like have a lot of momentum and like. Their head coach realized what Freddie Kitchens could never realize. Like, the Browns' offense line is a good run-blocking offense line, and they have very good running backs. And it took a different coach to come in and realize, like, hey, if we just run the football like they did against Dallas, and they have all year, actually. Like, Baker hasn't really done all that much. He's looked, like, pretty good, but he hasn't been throwing for, like, three, 400 yards. Baker's um, going to pick. But yeah, I, I like the Colts in this game. I think the Colts' defense is going to frustrate. Like, they have a really good run defense. And if I don't trust Baker to beat the Colts, and if they can't run the ball, and you don't have Nick Chubb, um, so I like the Colts. You got to let Baker bake. You do have to let Baker bake. So what's that line? Did we say it? It's it's minus Colts minus two over under forty six. Wow, that's a. So how bad are the Cowboys? Like looking at the Browns Dude, last week, like, that was a crazy one. Their defense is unbelievably fraud. Like that, that was gonna. Be, I'll just give my pick now, just because you brought it up. But like Dallas's defensive line got absolutely fucking scorched, and that's why they ran for over three hundred yards. And the Colts off or defensive line and run defense has been so phenomenal. Maybe outside of Week One, um, James Robinson kind of ran over them a little bit, but. Like, the, they, they handled the Bears. They handled the Vikings. Dalvin Cook. Like, I think I think the Colts are going to shut that shit down and make Baker make some really tough throws into the – They're going to try to let Baker bake. I think Baker is going to have two turnovers, one fumble, one interception. Colts are going to win by at least a touchdown. You're going to crop at that? Colts minus two is a great bet here. What about Baker plus – or uh, Baker two turnovers? That could be a great yeah, prop Baker, bet. Yeah, Baker over one and a half turnovers. <laughs> that could be a hell of a prop bet. Look to lock that in, folks. Um, That's probably crazy odds. Yo, dude, that'd be absurd odds. Actually, I'm, I'm it would be good odds. It would be good odds. Yeah, while you give your pick, I'm going to lurk. All right. Um, so, this is in the dog pound, boys. They're going to be barking. <laughs> name, a, name a more excited first – I guess this is still – this would second be the, the second quarter of the NFL season. Last time the – Bill or the, the fucking Browns were 3-1, and one, had to be in the 90s, right? Maybe, maybe early 2000s. Um, I mean, these – there's a little bit of fans in there, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is. So they're going to be fired the fuck up. I think the team as a whole, I mean, talk about momentum. You cannot have a more hyped up team to go win a fucking football game when you're a slight underdog. I mean, they're going to have a real chance here to be four and one. Um, I think Dick Rivers is just too old and they'll start pouting and <laughs> gosh darn it. In non cuss form, like dang nabbit. Freaking Baker's throwing all over us, guys. Like, 
stop them friggers. Um, I I gotta go Browns, bro. I just it just feels right. Like when it, when can you ever take the Browns? Never. Like it just feels like you gotta let Baker bake. That's my thing now. You gotta let Baker bake. Bro, it's bake. not going to be like let Russ cook kind of. No, thing. that's stupid. That fuck that shit. Let Baker bake. Let Baker bake. <laughs> Baker Mayfield fucking blows. He Baker's gonna funny. bake. Come on. Get that going. Let Baker bake. It, Baker's going to bake. It's, it's so hilarious that Jarvis Landry probably made a better pass than Baker on Sunday than yeah. Baker's made in his entire NFL career. Like, Jarvis Landry threw it on the fucking side run on a fucking dime. Like, it was such a good pass. So, yeah, th- that's the funny thing. As I say, let Baker bake, I'm obviously kidding a little bit. But right, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. His, the, for a 49-point game, he had, like, the worst stats of all time. Oh, like, man. Was, I was the stats. I'm like, wait a minute. They scored 49 points, and he had those numbers? You know, yeah. he's, only, you know he's, only, he's only thrown over 200 yards one game this year. <laughs> That's why I'm saying. If you let Baker bake, they're going to win the game. Listen to it. Listen, yeah. Listen to his stats against the Browns, who scored 49 points. 19 of 30, 165 yards, two touchdowns. Bro, and then go to the other quarterback. Look out. Those were insane. Dak had over 500 yards. 500 yards, bro. I know. It's four, insane. Four touchdowns. But the Browns, I mean, you had – you had That's three how guys. Odell had what? Like, bro. yeah. Odell had 73 yards rushing. Kareem Hunt and Seddy won. Johnson had 95. Nick Chubb had 43. Like, they rushed for 307 yards. So, yeah, are you are you sprinkling the money line with your pick? Is that what? Oh hell yeah! If it's a, if it's, it's I, my, what I see it as is, I bet you it'll get to. People are going to be on the Browns. I think people are going to hammer the Colts. I feel like on. I side. I think they will too. With the defense, I, the Colts have. I think I think the Browns like if you shark it, you could get the Browns around like three and a half or four points eventually. On this yeah. Side. So you're saying hammer that as late as possible. Like wait for the movement or. Don't bet it at all, probably, yeah. if, you're, if you're siding with the Browns. Actually, yeah, people, the public will hammer the Colts. That's Yeah, especially after, yeah, their defense looks so good. So, I mean, I think you have – yeah, just watch the movement, get the Browns. If you like the Browns, you, you can get some good uh, points movement there, like plus three, four, something like that. I agree. Um, all right, so we're getting into the two primetime games, Sunday night and Monday night football. Uh, Sunday night we got the Minnesota Piss Vikings going into – Face probably the future MVP of the league in uh, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks are opening right now minus seven, over or under 57 and a half. Do we even got to spend too much time on this? Like, how, it's how high seven. are you? 57 and a half, line seven. Like, are we still hot? Like, do we have any reason to still not be high on Russell and just? No, this is, this is what's going to happen. Like, it's going to be like, a somewhat close game, I think. Russell's going to, like, drive down. Russell's going to have a good game again. Kirk Cousins is going to be down the second half, just airing it out. So, they're going to be Prime out of time. sync. Prime time Kirk Cousins, too. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the Seahawks oh, are going to Seahawks That's are going to win this game. It's in Seattle. I know, like, home field doesn't matter, but traveling does matter. And Kirk yeah, Cousins does. doesn't travel well, and he doesn't play well at night. Is that and true? He really prefers one o'clock games. Uh, well, here's, the thing. here's the thing. Traveling was proven. I had that strat a couple weeks no, ago. I said specifically for Kirk Cousins. Though. Okay, for Kirk, I can get on that. Yeah. No, I'm saying this is all specific to Kirk Cousins. He, do, he doesn't play at nighttime. I don't care if it's 4 o'clock L.A. time. He is on Minnesota if it's time. time. To, if, if it's time to get tucked in back in Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. He thinks it's a night game. So, like, he's not going to play well. I mean, their only hope is is like Dalvin Cook rushing for. That's what I was going to say. I think Dalvin Cook can have a good game. Though. Yeah, and and they keep Russell off the field for as much as possible. Like that's like their only hope. But like, let's be honest, fucking Seahawks look really good. It might be like the problem is the Seahawks play weird close games. Like the teams that you think they should cover their spread, they do, or like the teams that you don't think they'll cover their spread, they do. And then the teams that are like, oh, but Dolphins. It's like that game was a one or nine point game, and the Dolphins had the ball, could have easily scored with like five minutes left. So. I, like, mm-hmm. I mean, the Seahawks are going to win. I probably would stay away from the line, but then it's also one of those, like, Russ comes out and throws five touchdowns. They win by 14. You're like, why the fuck did I overthink it? But Seahawks are going to win. Yeah. I think it's – so are they, they're, they're uh, 
or that they're four and zero. I think they're four and zero against the spread. If I'm not mistaken, uh, or maybe three and one. Right? I don't think they covered last week. They did. You last have week, a lock. That was both of our locks, bro. Wait, who they yeah. play? Uh, they played the Cowboys. They played the Cowboys the week before they won that. that was no, I was talking about – I meant week three, not like this past week. The Cowboys. No, that was the they Cowboys. Played, they didn't cover but that. they covered that game. Right, they did. Because it was only like three points. And then the oh, other yeah. – and then they played the Card- the Falcons week one. They covered that. And then who was their second week game? I'm looking right now. So, they played the Falcons week one. Yes, they covered. New England week two, they covered. Remember, covered. it was four. Yeah, they so they covered every five. Week. And they've been close. So are they due to not cover they've all Other than the Falcons, which we've realized is they have the worst fucking defense in football. But New England had the ball on the goal line, could have won the game. Dallas, it was actually a tie game, and Russell Wilson scored with like four minutes left to oh, put yeah. up seven, and it was a minus three. So, then Miami, they won by eight. It was five and a half. It was – every team's had a chance to cover. So, are they due to not cover here? It, they're going to – it's going to happen, but will it happen against – What's the all line the, again, all the, all the signs point you take the it's card – or the – And the over-under. Primetime cousin sucking. Seven straight? Yeah. Okay. This, I could see this pushing. Though. I could see them up 14 and Kirk Cousins throw some bullshit touchdown. Because the Seahawks play prevent defense when they're up. Like, I don't know. Like, these teams throw for so many yards on them. They played prevent defense for a whole half against the Cowboys, and that's how Dak and the boys got in that's back what, into that's it. That's what's scary. They, they play to win the game. Uh, I recorded that. That was Herm Edwards, right? Or no, that was the old co- – no, that, that was Herm Edwards. You yeah, play you play to win, win the game. game. Yeah, they do. That's what they do, and they're not worried about these spreads. No. So, because fucking Russell Wilson is, like, a huge – well, you can always fall back on him, too. Though. I think he's funny. It's all about religion, but think come on. Carroll. Think about the guys betting on you. Like, you think what? I said, I think, I think Pete Carroll kind of cares. Uh, maybe. I think he kind of cares. Oh, dude. Pete Carroll, he's 70, bro. He's not like really cares, but kind of cares. Okay, so who does everyone have? Sense. Who does everyone have? I, I'm going Seahawks. Yeah, out of my seven. Ever, ever since he ran the ball on the on the one, he lost his marbles, bro. He doesn't know what's going on. Okay. He's not okay. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Last game we're going to talk about before we get to our cards. We got the Chargers and the Saints. Uh, Monday night. Summer Ray's rear. Yeah. Saints minus oh, seven and a half. Over under fifty one. I like the over in this game. Um, Herbert's shown that he could throw the ball in the Saints defense. I do not think is that good. Um, and I also think teams have shown team teams have shown that like as long as you can keep give your quarterback time, the only like Chargers defense is their D line, you know. So like you can give your quarterback time, you can score points. I like the over in here. I think the Saints win, but I just like the Seahawks. Like I could see a backdoor cover or some stupid like that. Um, I like the over. Yeah. Um, what was the Saints had a risky cover last week against the Lions? I know that was on the road. It wasn't too risky. They were losing to begin the game though, but they ended up were they were up fourteen with five minutes left. And then, I yeah. guess yeah, it was. I, I guess it it was just scary for at times. It was scary at times. Well, yeah, the um, first the first five the minutes. Were 14-0. I was gonna say, yeah, it was like five I, minutes. Like, it was I looked at the score. I was like, yo. But you know, if like, if if every Lions game ended after the first ten minutes, they would be four and zero, and four double digit wins. That that's an yes. That's a at ESPN stats. That's so uh, stat. some, That's such a saber metric right there. I know, but, like, think of that. They've, they've lost three out of their four games by double. Yeah, they, they're so good in the first half. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, like, wait a minute. So did, we, did we just catch on to something? Are we going Lions first half? The no, because then, like, this week they're going to get blown out in the first half probably. But Who are they playing? I don't even know who they're playing. I think they're on a bye. Oh, my God. Of course they're on a fucking <laughs> bye. They are. They are on a bye, yeah. Green Bay, Green Bay are on a bye. Yep. Fuck you, Lions. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'll go – if it was seven, I'd go with the uh, Saints. That's what I'm saying. Scaring me. Maybe I'll buy a half point. <laughs> we'll see. It. We'll no, see. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
dude, I don't know what – like, I wouldn't worry about buying the line. Like, I'm in love with the Chargers plus seven and a half here. Like, Hell no, bro. I think this is – Sherbert like, Sherbert is a fucking – I hate Sherbert. They dude, didn't this, even... this is the weakest – Um, this is the weakest team that the Chargers have played uh, in, like, three or four weeks. Like, they played uh, the – The Panthers? Huh? They played the, the Panthers. The Panthers are the better okay. than the Saints? Minus, minus the Panthers. But they played the Chiefs and the Bucks. like – down to the last possession, like, and in overtime. Like, the Saints defense has been very lackluster. The offense doesn't have a lot of a lot going for it. Like, is Michael Thomas even going to start again this week? Like, is he still going to be out? That's a good question. Are, but like, are we, do we believe in look-aheads in the NFL or not? What do you mean? Look-ahead weeks, like, where you just don't care about this team because you're going to beat them. No, I think the Saints should definitely be concerned about the No, track. I'm saying – in. If we do, the Chiefs had one when they played the Chargers. Yeah. I, yeah. Understand, like, I understand that, but, like, at some point, like, your team has to realize, oh, like, we have to win this football game. Yeah, and they did. <laughs> that's what, that's they what I'm saying. Play. Like, they didn't, like, especially for how hurt, like, the Chargers have been, like, they still play, like, pretty decent football on both sides, like, for the most part. Like, their defense kind of fell apart second they half. They have a problem finishing drives sometimes. I, don't, I didn't even watch the Bucks game, so I don't know how that went. But I'm saying – that's why I'm saying, like, plus seven and a half, like, keep it within a touchdown. Like, I definitely think this is going to be another one of those down to the last possession. Seven and a half is amazing. Like, I think the Chargers definitely have a legitimate chance of winning this game. I'd be – like, Herbert has shown – Herbert, I'd be surprised. Herbert, they, they could, though. I mean – But, but, but people don't have right – people don't have film on him. The more film you get – the more people are going to key in on things. Like, sure. I, I, if Michael Thomas plays, this will be a two-score game. If he right. doesn't that, play – I'm saying all this assuming Michael Thomas is – If he doesn't play – because the Saints offense is kind of starting to click. But if he doesn't play, um, I think the Saints I, – I, the Chargers might cover. I, I think they probably do cover because I think it could be like a seven-point game. The problem is the uh, – Brady has some issue thrown on the field, right? Not as bad as um, – what's his face? Dick Breeze. But he, his arm's not there, right? Like, he, you'd say that? He hasn't really shown anything this whole year. Who, Drew Brees? No, Brady. Dick Brady. Oh. I mean, he was making a lot of good, like, 15-yard throws to Mike Evans. I was going to say, I feel like he just has a few it's bad – It's not as bad, but it's not, it's not where it once was. I'm, it's like a declining arm, I guess. It's my, my point was – Probably, he still had yeah. five passing touchdowns. So, I I think, like, the Chargers' defense scares me a little bit. Their passing defense apparently isn't the best showing from that showing last week. So, it, it's just tough. That, that's just – the line is just a little bit too much. I'm, I would – I'll never take the Chargers again after Sherbert fucked me with the pants there. I might even – I'll blame him. Fuck it. Even, it wasn't even his fault, but I'll blame him. I do think I do think they have some like good momentum off the like the last week. Even though they lost, like I thought they played really well most of the game. And last week they did, but the Panthers game they did not play well. Yeah, I don't think they have momentum. I don't if you, if that's in an insane way to bottle momentum off the of two losses. But if they do it, then right. I mean, I just mean like for what the Chargers were expected to do this year. I think they're playing way like above expectation for most aspects of their team. I don't think so. I think they were supposed, they were, the Ra- they were supposed to head, finish ahead of the Raiders, weren't they? Or was that the Bronco? Or the- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think so after the injury reports came out. Like, they lost guys so early in the first, like, week. Oh, well, maybe after that, yeah. yeah. But they still – I mean, yeah, but, like, sooner or later, like, for NFL teams, like, more victory, victories are not a thing. Like, if you just keep losing close, like, no one really gives a shit. Right, and but that's that's my point. Losing close and having a good team that was expected to do stuff is a little different than like having the Chargers team expected to finish in last place and like playing really close against good teams and like your rivals. Like, yeah, I mean, this week, I guess to your point, this week will show a lot about the Chargers. Like, especially if, especially if Michael Thomas is out. Like, I I love that line if Michael Thomas is out. Yeah, but if they go out and get beat by 12, 14 points and Michael Thomas doesn't play, the Chargers suck. Like, let's just yeah, be then they, then they suck. I just I, – I do like rooting for uh, Herbert because I watch the Chargers game every week because I watch the 
NFL games with Brett. So, like, we watched the Bears and the Chargers full games amongst, like – He's yeah, no, the Chargers were not – the Chargers were supposed to be, like, a 7-9 team. Like, they were not supposed to be, la- like, terrible, terrible. Maybe. 7-9, that's, like – yeah, oh, okay, before the injuries, like, I could definitely see them getting that. Big. Yeah. Um, so. All right, so let's get into our cards then. Um, that's all the games we're going to talk about. Um, like we mentioned before, um, I'll go over, like, our overall units real quick right before we – um, give her cards. Like I said earlier as well, um, Brett is going to text me his card and his picks, and we'll have those up tweeted um, either tonight or tomorrow whenever you text me those. So just keep your eyes out for his. He's been doing – he's been pretty consistent, pretty good this year. Um, that being said, we got Michael plus 12 units winning the year so far. Um, oh, fuck. Alina just back in the black, plus 1.2. I'm Shout out to ACDC back in black. Let's go. I'm minus six. Need to make some moves. Um, and Brett is plus seven, doing fine. Definitely in the definitely in the battle with Michael for the top of the show. But, I mean, I'm down almost 20 units through four weeks to Michael. Also, so also you have – Alina has two weeks one. Brett has one, and I have one. How many units are you down? To Michael, six. okay, just just to like in the negative, I'm six. But like to Michael, I'm like 18 behind Michael. Yeah. Oh, you're not winning that. Bitch, well, we got plenty of NFL season left. Come on now. All right, let's do it, boys. Uh, All right. COVID has to say anything about it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'll go first. I have a very small card right now. Um, this might change. I might tweet picks because right now I just didn't find a lot of what I like. But I, have, yeah, I, hate, I hate this fucking. Game. Yeah, this week I did not like it all. The Falcons minus two, the Colts minus two, the Bengals plus thirteen, and then my lock of the week. Do or die scene. All right, or that was do a- or die. Yeah, yeah, quick card. All right, what about you, Elena? God, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just do it. We'll go. I, see, I know what Michael's lock is. I'll say it as my third pick. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, I'll go Chiefs minus 13, uh, Cardinals minus 7, Bucks minus 3.5, um, Rams minus 7. Uh, man, some of these lines are just too much. What was the last one you said? Rams minus 7. What do you have for oh, that? Yeah. No, who do who do they have? I, I didn't even the Washington that. football team. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, I'll double check. Oh, New starting no. quarterback for the Washington football team. No, seven. It's seven and a half. Okay. It's seven on this. Whatever. Seven. Damn, that's a. I don't know about that one. Though. I think you should be good. No, Dwayne Haskins. They're not starting Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. yeah, but they suck anyway. I guess I'll just do it. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, and then I'm I'm gonna take the Ravens minus thirteen. They beat up on the shitty teams, so. I'll keep riding that. They they covered last week for me. Um, and then my luck. Uh, Nagy, also, did you mention Brett is on a one-game losing streak on his – Yeah, nine. so Brett, yeah. Brett's the only guy on the NFL show. That yep. I, oh, no, no, I'm going uh, Cleveland plus one – or two. Okay. One unit play, right? That's not your do or die. Yeah, it's not my luck. Okay. All right. I finally have a parlay on my card. So it's not my do or die, but it's on my card. Um, I'll save that for last. Uh, I got the Bears Bucks over 44. Um, I also have the Rams minus seven and a half. Um, I got the Panthers plus one. I got uh, the Dolphins plus nine uh, against the 49ers. And then my par- I parlayed the Panthers money line and the Chargers money line for a one unit play plus seven oh three. Oh buddy. So, you wait for the unit. Uh fuck you. <laughs> I need to make moves, we said. Uh, yeah, that's well, just, I like that. I like the attempt to make the move there. That's good. You, you, you were aggressive in college and this, so I, I respect that. All right. So I have um I have five normal one unit plays, one being a parlay. 
And hopefully the Panthers don't fuck me because they're on two of my one units. So, uh, and then I got two do or die plays this week. Okay. My do or die, I think everyone knows it, everyone can guess, is the Bucks minus three and a half tomorrow night. They're taking down the fucking shitty Bears. Big Dick Nick's going to fucking – his dick's going to get Dump his diaper. In. Yeah, dump his diaper. Fucking Coach Nagy over there and his Hoosier hat's going to get his ass kicked again. So You're so unbelievable. You're going to tell Uncle Nagy to step it the fuck up? Yeah, you better tell your uncle to step it up. How many units are you putting on that shit? I'm putting four. Ooh, right. I thought it was a – a double whammy burger, like a cup, triple decker or something, quad stacker. I got, I Michael keep, doesn't need to. Michael's in first place. I was going to say, I got to keep my lead. Yeah. But. yeah. So even after you lose that one, you'll probably still be in first place after this week. I don't know. Brett Brett has a good oh, week. Brett's, Brett's hanging in. How many? What's Brett up, like seven or eight? So, yeah, he's only like five units. If I lose my do or die and he wins his, that right there could make a switch flip-flop first and second. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, what about you, winner? So my lock is the Seahawks minus seven. I'm riding them. I'm gonna let Russ cook, as they say. Whoever I, says that. <laughs> I know. I know. Until, until likes that he gets, until he sets the fire alarm off in that kitchen, I'm gonna let him keep cooking, baby. Let's go. Who's Seattle playing? Vikings. Huh? I know. All right. Uh, I was so gonna say, I, that's why I said I know you like that pick because you hate the fucking Vikings. <laughs> yeah, so my first do or die. We, is we're also, riding them, Aggie, for two weeks yeah, straight. Let's go. My, my first one is also going to be Seattle. Oh. I'm, I'm doing the first half. Ooh. First half Seattle is minus three and a half. You really got in the lab after a shitty week. Oh, shit. You really got in the lab. Like, you had a shitty football week. In minus the three? Minus three and a half first half. Four units. Like it. Ooh. And then That's my second one is going to unfortunately have to be the team that just put the Bears to shame. Oh, okay. I'm taking the Colts minus two. Good pick. Good pick. Six units. Good pick. Ooh, good pick. God damn, bro. Good so pick. I got, 10, I got 10 on my two do or dies, 15 altogether. I just – I would love to get back to positive. If I, if I win um, – I would need to win like six or so units to get back in the positive land. And damn, I dude, I forgot all about first half lines in the NFL. I might have to like relook at some. I stuff. know I need to reevaluate the whole NFL line because I didn't like any lines. So I think yeah, I might go. First half could no, be I'm nice saying game. like I think yeah. I might have like a full blown first half card. <laughs> so, <laughs> hard <full laughs> yeah. Like the Lions, bro. When the Lions get back next week, yeah. Bro. Dude, we might. I might. I might throw big bucks in that first. Just I'll take Lions money line first half. Next yes, time. but all right. Those are our cards. Uh, we will tweet them. Uh, let's have a winning week. Before we before we dip, Nagy, you're flip flopping the Falcons a lot here. You're going with them. You're I going. With them. Where you where do you land now? He's against I, them this week. Now I'm I'm purely dude. Dan Quinn is such a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we knew this last week though. Watching him coach against the Packers was literally making my fucking eyes bleed. He is so bad. <laughs> and, and and Julio Jones isn't playing this week. That's Brady's uncle too. It's crazy. Brady Quinn. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. So that's where Nagy is on the Falcons. So he's been wrong every time. So let's see. <laughs> Fly. I, fuck. Falcons minus one. 